I'd like to start talking about some of the natural draft fundamentals uh, related to the basics of venting. So let's get started. All right, um, some of the venting, uh, venting basics that we're gonna be dealing with here um, primarily are gonna focus more on category one type appliances. Um, in the image to the right, um, I've identified certain types of air that we have to um, deal with, we have to compensate for, we have to make up for. So there is such a thing as the dilution air, which of course dilution air is going to enter into the draft hood, which would be in this case just shown here. That could be for a boiler, it could be for a furnace, any, any appliance where they're going to be diluting the products, that's one. Um, there's also um, combustion air, obviously that's going to be used to allow us to burn those products and then ventilation air and so on would make that up. Um, could be dealing with a boiler system like this one or we could even be dealing with um, another type of a, a furnace that would, might be maybe a power vented type application or uh, another induced draft application. All right, so let's take a look at maybe the reasons for venting an appliance. So, you know, why do we need to do this? What's the reasoning? So there's really three main reasons, and certainly uh, one of them is there's always a possibility of having carbon monoxide being produced. Um, even on well-burning appliances, it's, it's difficult to get perfect combustion where there would be zero carbon monoxide, so we definitely have to do that. Another one is um, the incredible amount of water that's being formed during combustion. Uh, when we look at basically, you know, let's say burning a 100 cubic feet of gas um, per hour that we would be dealing with, which, you know, that's roughly about 100,000 um, BTUs. And in this particular case, just running a furnace for an hour, we can produce, um, there's roughly just over a gallon of water that's being produced uh, as a result of that. So that's a substantial amount of water that is, you know, we've got to concern ourselves with. Um, the other um, significant issue with why we want to vent is also asphyxiation, so suffocation. Eventually, if I'm burning an appliance, I am going to use up all of that oxygen at some point. It will do that and uh, it just becomes a deadly issue. So those are really my main reasons why I need to be venting an appliance. So let's take a look at some of the problems associated with venting. So the first thing I want to deal with is if I consume 100, if I take 100 cubic feet of gas, I mean think about that, 100 cubic feet of gas I'd be burning, that's, that's not a lot of gas. It would produce roughly 226 pounds of flue gases. That's an awful lot. So essentially, you know, what do we need to do to make sure that we can get this 226 pounds be moved? So the first thing that has to happen in any venting system is you've got to somehow be able to make the flue gases lighter than the surrounding air. So the hotter they are, the lighter they are. It's just really a matter of density. So let's take another look at it and some of the issues that we might be dealing with. So if I look at a typical application where I've got water vapor, I've got to vent them, let's look at some of those temperatures. So on an 80% efficient furnace, whether it's 80, 81, 82, 83, and so on and so forth, you're gonna be somewhere in that 300 to 350 to 400 degree range. So let's just throw 350 degrees as a flue gas temp roughly. Almost all of that water vapor should be going out that vent. There should be really little left that would not um, be going out the vent system. So your vent system has to handle that. On a 90 percenter, I could have flue gas temps that might be in the, they could range anywhere from 90 all the way up to 130 degrees or even higher. Um, so I'll put 110 degrees as kind of a ballpark number. So below that boiling point of that water, Obviously that water vapor is gonna be uh, condensing in that heat exchanger and the vent pipes. So the venting system has to deal with that mass as well. So there's a fair amount of, uh, of energy, but as you can tell, the temperatures of the vent gases are so much lower on a 90% on a efficient furnace. So let's take a look at some of that heat. An 80% efficient furnace 
you got 80% of the heat that's going out to the, to the building, out into the room, out into the heated air. Um, a boiler would be 80% efficient boiler would be 80% of the heat would go to the water. So there's 20% left over when you think about it that way. 20% of the heat is available in the vent system. 10% of that is going to be in the form of latent heat or essential, let's call it water vapor. The other 10% is just an actual sensible heat that's only really going to be able to be used to heat up that vent system. So that's pretty significant. So of the two system, of the two listings that I show here, water vapor and sensible heat, which one do you think is going to make the flue gas lighter? Well, I would say that it's probably going to be the 10%, the 10% the of, the, of the heat. It's a sensible heat. The sensible heat is really all that's left to warm up that vent system or you know, to allow us to get these to vent out. So again, not a lot. It's not a significant amount of energy that's available for us. So that's one of the big issues. So let's take a look at venting power and exactly what that is. So, my question is, what two things would determine the venting power? So if we take a look at, at a furnace or a heating system application, and let's say that my, you know, my vent system, I've got some temperature that's in the flue pipe. So maybe that's you know, on the high, high end, we're looking at 450, but it's probably more realistic that it might be you know, 350 degrees or so but um, 300 to three to 400 degrees. So if in this case, uh, there's a very, very small amount of energy, what we call thermal head. Um, you might, some people might call it torrential draft as well, but it's thermal head. And essentially it's, it's a really low, low number. Um, I don't expect to see a whole heck of a lot more than, uh, than really, you know, 0 0.04 um, on the high end of that. So, when we ask ourselves, um, what are the things that really makes a difference? So the first one that I listed on here was, um, was how the vent height is, is so significant. The other one is the heat. So there are, there are two forces that are gonna have the greatest impact on a vent system. And one of them is gonna be the height of your vent system. The higher the height, the taller the system is, the vent system is, the stronger your draft is going to be allowed to be. The, the other thing is the heat. The more heat you have, the easier it's gonna to be to vent. You can get a stronger draft associated with that. So as you can tell, you know, as the furnace is getting more and more efficient, what's happening is we're losing a whole bunch of the heat and that's creating some more issues. So higher efficiency appliances just are more difficult to vent. So let's take a look at, at the first thing. So one of our needs that we have is we need the, to minimize um, some resistance. The more resistance in the vent system means a reduction in the flue gas flow. It means it's difficult, it's more difficult to vent. Um, that also creates a problem with spillage. So the term spillage is maybe a new term that maybe you haven't uh, thought about or heard of. Spillage is essential when those flue gases will leak out of the vent system or an appliance and maybe back into the building. Um, that becomes a little bit of a problem. So as you can tell, um, you know, if I ask, you know, what's the best practice for a venting system for natural draft, it's make it as streamlined as possible. Make it as low resistance as possible. Well, what can cause excessive pressure drop in a vent system? Well, it's easy to have this happen. You could have too many elbows. You could have too long of a run. Um, I specifically noted horizontal laterals. Um, anytime that I go horizontally, even if I'm pitching it upward, I'm still making it difficult for that vent system to want to vent. Um, it is reducing the, let's call it the thermal draft or even torrential draft. That's another type of a draft. So this is a pretty major deal. So let's take a look at, so what are some items that I might have to think about when I'm designing a vent system? Um, let's take a look. So I think one of them is that I want to certainly size my vent system for the BTUs of my appliances that I'm going to connect to them. That's certainly very necessary. I need to make sure that my vertical run lengths are, are adequate. 
Um, the longer I make them, the taller I make them, the better off my drafting is going to be. The horizontal runs have to be minimized. So those are what I called laterals earlier. So that's kind of another, another way to look at them. I need to minimize my elbows. The vent tables that we're gonna be using later on when we do the sizing is, they're very um, critical and you can only have so many uh, elbows. Anytime you add more elbows, you're gonna to start to create more resistance, make it more difficult to vent. So you need to do that, um, need to minimize elbows any type of elbows. Um, what's the reference that we use to do all this? So in other words, you know, how are we determining you know, how the proper methods to de design any type of category and vent system would be? And that's really my National Field Gas Code Book. That's really my main reference that I need to be using uh, and that I refer to. All of the codes really all generally go back to that reference as a guide to determine uh, when something should be modified. So when uh, we take a look at this particular application that uh, we're looking at here, um, you can kind of see I've got a little unit heater that's hanging right here in this picture. And as you can tell, um, the venting isn't really going the right way, we'll call it. Now this may be acceptable to some extent in some applications. Um, there's a couple of things that I would note on here, like the, this, this is clearly single wall pipe. Um, they're going through a wall. They're clearly not abiding by clearance from combustibles, things like that. So there's a few things. Um, these are things that, as a technician, you kind of have to be out, you know, looking out for or seeing things uh, in the field as, uh, as you do service or if you're installing it. You need to be looking at so all right your assignment on this one here is going to be to complete the powerpoint fundamentals number 21 and then uh, we'll uh, next thing we're going to do is we're going to take a look at bad venting